that originates in the manufacturing sector, these two states have shown higher level of growth than even Maharashtra, Haryana, Tamil Nadu. Being newer and smaller states, they respond more rapidly than the larger, in some way, more better endowed neighbors. According to Dr. Devendra Kothari, Professor of Population Program Management, the small states versus big state argument is also an international issue. In United States too, there have been a lot of noise, though, in, in, though very little action. The last state in the, created by carving out part of another was West Virginia. That was way back in 1863. But practically every American state has witnessed split proposals since then. In an article titled Divide We Stand, the Wall Street Journal asked what would be California look like if broken into three, or a Republic of New England, with the federal government reaching for uh, even more for power, redrawing of the American map is enticing. Now, if this is true of America, it's more true of India. Professor Kothari recommends smaller states. He says, why? while India is internal, internal map may not soon start looking like a pre independent jigsaw puzzle presented by the media provinces and kingdoms and Maharajas and Rajas, the world's largest democracy could add a few more states if it takes its cue from the U.S. The 50 states that the United States has today uh, has for its population of just 300 million is almost double the number of states India has for its population of 1.2 million billion people. Lastly, I quote another former critic, Gautam Adhikari, in just last Saturday's Times of India. Is India too big to govern? He wondered. He, wonder. he settles for a truly federal setup with smaller states, 50 if not more, with more power. I quote him, we could ask the Finance Commission in a final exercise before she shutting, shutting itself down for good, to redraw central state relations radically giving states far more powers than they have, such as raising income tax like states can in the United States, while reducing the federal tax as well as size and responsibilities of the federal bureaucracy. Expand the bureaucracy where necessary, like the diplomats, Indian Foreign Service, while drastically reducing the power of number of IAS and other central services. Perhaps governing India could then become manageable. I think the era of large manageable, unmanageable states has is past. The population of India is projected to increase from 1.2 billion in 2011 to 1.7 billion in 2051. As per Population Reference Bureau, that is, in the next 40 years, an increase of by 540 million people. As a consequence, the total population of 10 most populous for the super states of India will increase from 927 million to 1.36 billion. This fact must be kept in mind while redrawing the map of India. As such, division of existing super states is a must for both governance and socio-economic reasons. The total population of to be carved out smaller states should not exceed more than 50 million each with administration-friendly interstate boundaries. Professor Deepankar Gupta, formerly of Jawaharlal University, recalled that in 1980s, any demand for a smaller state used to generate anger and disapproval and fear that only enemies of the country would benefit from such a division. We have come a long way since then. He says that the demand for smaller states indicates the evolution of Indian policy. I think it is time to constitute a second state reorganization commission. Having made out a case, hopefully, for the need for smaller states, I now turn to Telangana. It is both significant and ironic that Andhra Pradesh, from where division of India on the linguistic basis began, should now have demand for its division on grounds of regional disparity. The SRC did not favor an immediate merger of Telangana region with Andhra Pradesh, despite their common language. Para 382 of SRC report noted that this decision in favor of a larger Andhra state was overwhelming 
and that opinion in favor of separate phenomena was not crystallized. It said important leaders of public opinion in Andhra themselves seem to appreciate the unification of phenomena with Andhra. Though desirable, should be based on a voluntary and willing association of the people and that it is primarily for the people of Telangana to take decision about their future. The case of Telangana has gone by default. The SRC proposed that Telangana region uh, be constituted as a separate state with a provision for unifi unification with Andhra Pradesh, Andhra state after 1962 general election. If a resolution could be passed in the Telangana State Assembly with two-thirds majority, that did not happen. Andhra State Assembly uh, Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru initially was skeptical of merging Telangana with Andhra State, fearing, I quote him, hint of expansionist imperialism. He compared the merger to, of Andhra and Telangana to matrimonial alliance having <coughs> provision for divorce if the partners in the alliance cannot get on well. Like on many issues that brought them in that era, Nehru was misled by other central leaders. Chief Minister of Hyderabad State, Burgula Ramkrishna Rao, expressed his view that a majority of Telangana people were against the merger. Despite opposition in Telangana, however, the Congress Party central leadership decided to merge Telangana and Andhra. Telangana leaders did not believe in safeguards that these safeguards would work. With lobbying from Andhra Congress leaders and with pressure from the central leadership of Congress party, an agreement was reached between Telangana leaders and Andhra leaders on 20th February 1996 to merge Telangana and Andhra with promise to safeguard Telangana leaders. The question is, has that happened? From here began the story of betrayal, discrimination, of promises not kept, Year after year, election after election, government after government. It is a long story and I can only fast forward to the present times when the Union government in 2009 set the ball rolling for a separate state of Andhra for Telangana without an action plan. All the stakeholders seem to have agreed to the separation and then, sorry to say, opportunistically backed out. This is the crux of the problem today. What the union government, with the union government facing charges of corruption, misgovernance and much else, it is doubtful if Telangana is a priority. And with Andhra Pradesh itself witnessing turmoil from what I can see from New Delhi of a weak government, fast losing political support and credibility, Telangana cannot be a priority. Sadly, there was ambivalent about a separate Telangana and Indira Gandhi opposed it. But the current government, having opened up the issue, has no view on it at all. This wound cannot be allowed to fester, it is already 50 years now. It is a political charade, its end does not seem to be in sight. I am hardly qualified to talk of Telangana's discrimination before this gathering, that the region comprising 10 districts and except, and except Hyderabad, all nine are backward, is too well known to be mentioned. It seems that the agreements, plans and assurances from the state legislature and Lok Sabha over the last 50 years have not been honored and as a consequence, Telangana has remained neglected, exploited and backward. The experiment to remain as one state has proven to be a futile exercise and that separation is the best solution. As I wish the very best to the future Telangana state, I know it has to come someday. I would like to end on a note of caution. I have earlier referred to the three states. Uh, uh, these three states, some of the rapid economic growth has also tainted with massive corruption. For instance, sheer money power and about an independent legislator, Madhu Koda, to become chief minister for Jharkhand. He handed out dozens of mining licenses instead of auctioning them to the highest bidders. Actually, this problem affects the whole of India. Natural resources from coal to telecom spectrum are constantly gifted to favored parties instead of being auctioned. And this enables politicians to amass fortunes. I hope people of Telangana will be vigilant and ensure that these things are not duplicated.
Telangana is going to be a landlocked state. All the use of its natural resources and its economic development would depend heavily on its relation with the neighbors and good ties with the coastal people. When it comes, let it be cordial reorganization. I again cite the example of the three states. While they peacefully coexist with their neighbors, their parent states also learn to move on. Telangana will have to learn to live with the people of Andhra. I conclude with sincere thanks to the organization and to all of you for having heard me speak.